what's good? Welcome into the show. This is Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior, and today's show is presented by True Classic. Get 25% off the best menswear at trueclassic.com slash chat sports. We'll tell you more about them coming up here just around the corner. As for what we're getting into on the docket for today, Eagles signing a linebacker edge rusher hybrid former third round pick who has some potential and is a really solid athlete. Another Hassan Reddick update as he continues to be a primary storyline hovering around the birds and what you can expect from new defensive coordinator Vic Fangio from the eyes of one of his former players. Let's get to story number one and that's the Eagles making another addition to their roster going into NFL free agency. Julian Aquara has been signed to the Eagles active roster and he's a former third round pick Drafted by Detroit back in 2020, he played his college football at Notre Dame. A lot of you might be familiar with his brother, who also played in the National Football League. He is an outside linebacker with pass rushing skills. And when I talk about him being a quick, twitchy athlete in the mold of a Nolan Smith, a Hassan Reddick, not that heavy at 239 pounds, but fast coming off the edge at 6'4". He spent his first four seasons with the Detroit Lions, and he was let go, released by Detroit in the lead-up to the NFC Championship game. And what he and what this move gives Philadelphia in this defense under new defensive coordinator Vic Fangio, pass rushing depth ahead of free agency. They're going to be able to get him in the building, see what he's like, He's going to be a training camp body at the very least, and maybe he's going to be able to prove himself. The Eagles love taking chances on athletes, and Julian Aquora is an athlete. You're also taking a shot on a player with a lot of physical potential. You look at a player like Nolan Smith. You take a gander at a player like Kassan Reddick, and in the pre-draft process, you look at players of that mold and a lot of teams become infatuated with them. And Aquora was one of those players coming out of Notre Dame, very active, twitchy, solid bend. And you look at some of his production here in his first four years. Rookie year plays six games, zero sacks. But then in year two, he plays 13 games, five sacks. That's not bad. 2022, only 10 games and two sacks. And then this past year in 2023, in that just incredible season for Detroit in route to the NFC title game in which they lost that 17-point halftime lead to the San Francisco 49ers outside of the Bay Area. Nine games and two sacks and then let go in the lead up to that NFC title bout. In his career, he's played in 38 games. He's made four starts during that time frame. Nine sacks, 12 tackles for loss, 16 quarterback hits, and 54 tackles overall. And Vic Fangio is going to see what he can do with the player who certainly does have some ability. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because when the birds make a move, we talk about it. Closing in on 72,000 subscribers. So if you want to stay in the know with all things Eagles, with content coming your way on the rundown every single day year-round, we have you covered with yours truly, Chase Sr. As I mentioned off the top, today's Eagles now is sponsored by True Classic, and they're one of our favorite sponsors here at Chat Sports. They make the fellas look good no matter how we move. Out with the old workout tees with sweat stains and holes in it, in with True Classic's ultra comfortable and stretchy activewear. Out with all those crappy jeans. True Classic has some phenomenal jeans. When I hit the golf course, I've been able to wear some of the True Classic polos as well. Really, anything that you want for your wardrobe, from sweat shorts to running shorts to laid-back apparel to apparel that you can wear going out on a date with the homies. You want to rock a hoodie? This is the perfect time of year for that. Joggers, True Classic has it all. And you can save which is a phenomenal deal. Limited time only, 25% off when you shop with my exclusive link, trueclassic.com slash chat sports. From running on the treadmill to going on a beer run, as long as you're moving, True Classic has the gear for you. You've seen me wear all types of clothes from True Classic here on the show, from the shirts that we're showing you on the screen to the polos and more. True Classic, 25% off, trueclassic.com slash chat sports. All right, now to a new Hassan Reddick update. 
And the timeline here for Red, it kind of started on Super Bowl Sunday when the Eagles granted him and his agent permission to seek a trade. And then yesterday we talked about the news that Hassan Reddick came out with Jordan Schultz. Jordan Schultz with the report, and Reddick was like, I never demanded a trade. I want to be here, but I also understand it's a business. Schultz was on 94 WIP today on this beautiful Wednesday, and Schultz with this report because he spoke directly to his son Reddick. So this is coming right from the source here. There is no bad blood. They did this last year with Darius Slay. They obviously brought him back. Hassan Reddick was very clear when we spoke yesterday at length. I understand this is a business. I have no ill will towards the Eagles. I haven't gotten the sense up until this point that he was particularly frustrated in speaking with him throughout the season. I think he has such good relationships within the building and because the city and organization have meant so much to him, I never got that sense. He grew up in the Philly area, right across the bridge in New Jersey. He went to Temple University under Matt Rule, played his college football at Lincoln Financial Field. And look, Philadelphia Eagles are not a dumb organization, right? Since 2000, they're second in the NFL for the most playoff wins behind the New England Patriots, and Reddick has 27 sacks over the last two years. He's been an awesome player for this team that really prioritizes getting after the quarterback and prioritizes building up their defense with edge rushers. Spin zone, it's kind of a smart move by Philadelphia, right? You give Reddick and his camp permission to seek a trade, and then his agent is able to reach out to other teams Hey, my client, interested in a trade, but upon landing him in that trade, he needs a contract extension because he's going into the final year of his deal, $15.5 million, non-guaranteed. What are you willing to pay him? Eagles then get that message back from the agent. Okay, this is the asking price. These are the offers that the agent and the player are fielding from multiple teams across the NFL. Now we know what it's going to take to bring Reddick back. So they know the market and Howie Roseman from that point can then operate accordingly. I've said here just because the Eagles granted him permission doesn't mean that Reddick is going to get dealt. There is a scenario and I think a likely scenario that Reddick can come back to Philly and can continue to haunt opposing quarterbacks. What can we as fans, what can Eagles players on the defensive side of the pill expect from Vic Fangio? Quentin Demps, who played for the Eagles early in his career, also played under Fangio with the Chicago Bears, talked about what type of coach Vic Fangio is and some of the, I guess, conversations out there and the narratives out there, better word to put it, around Fangio and some players not really getting along with them. Here's what Demps had to say and what was a pretty honest take. I think that the gripe from the guys, it's not that they don't like Vic Fangio. It's just that they don't like the demand. His meetings are long. It's just a day and time now where like, do we need to meet this long and go over this? I doubt guys dislike him personally. It's more so about how he's old school about going about his business. He's a great human being, but he is stuck in his ways, right? An older coach, veteran coach, Got some swag, but I think if he can just adjust a little bit to the times, man, he would really get a defense to buy in again. Dolphins' defense was pretty good last year. The Dolphins' defense also had to suffer from a bunch of injuries to marquee players. And then when Fangio was the head coach of Denver, a lot of players raved about him there. And with Chicago, with San Francisco, his defenses were balling when... He had some pretty good players. When you don't have players, it's difficult for your defense to succeed. And you know what? The Eagles' defense, they need somebody to be demanding, to hold them accountable, because that unit, hot garbage in 2023. They were awful. Been watching football for a really long time. Like I remember being a kid, so young, watching Eagles games. That Eagles' defense, even though this organization was pretty bad in the late 90s, you know, Rich Kotite to Ray Rhodes to Andy Reid. And then Andy Reid obviously got Jim Johnson. And we had to see Billy Davis under Chip Kelly throughout my lifetime. This Eagles defense of 2023, I think it was the worst that I've ever seen. And Vic Fangio, he's just not going to let some of that stuff fly. A much needed change of pace and a good veteran hire for the young coach still. That is Nick Sirianni. If you're still rocking with us on today's show, show number two on this Wednesday because... That's just what we do. It's a standard for Eagles talk right here on YouTube. Give me a real one, and we'll catch you next time here on the show.